And then, yeah, I mean, that was, that was it right there. Yeah. But those three guys, that core, they stepped up big. Here's Mike D'Antoni after the loss. Way back into the game and, and Durant being out, uh, that, that you guys missed an opportunity here. Well, anytime we lose, we feel like we missed an opportunity. It's, uh, you know, they hit bigger shots probably than we did. Um, so they, they did their part. It was just, again, a few loose balls, a few rebounds, which just didn't come up with, which we have been. Um, and we got to come up with it. And we got to, you know, we started the game well, but then we, they got up on us 20 points. It's hard to battle all the way back, which we did. And then going into the fourth quarter, we're tied, and we just didn't get it done. Mike, Dan Wicke with the Los Angeles Times. Uh, James was so good for most of the game, but kind of quiet in, in the fourth. What did you see uh, down the stretch from him? Well, I mean, does whatever we need to be done. Uh, he, he kind of let it go a little bit, but we, you know, we scored every time that he was kind of quiet, and he, he he reads that. But uh, you know, I thought he played a monster game. He played 40, 44 minutes, forty five minutes, whatever we need from him, he gives us. I thought he was great. Um, we just weren't real sharp early when we went down twenty. Then it looked like we we gathered it and, and right ourselves. But a lot of times when you do that, you exhale a little bit, and they're good. Can't do it. Mark. Mike, how do you look at things now uh, going back to you down 3-2? How do you look at the series now? Um, well, obviously now, you know, each, we got two more games. Got to win them both. Um, and we are home. And it's, it's just the must win. But, it, you know, we know that. This is the must win tonight. And if it is the must win tomorrow, it's always the must win. So uh, we'll be ready. Now it's just a time to gather our energy and uh, and see what happens on Friday. But, you know, we're home and try to get a win, come back up here and get one. The difficulty Chris had to just get open looks and for Clint to have clean catches and so on, is it just remove too much margin of error to take those two guys so much out of the offense, not get their normal production? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, yeah, for sure. But they'll, they'll bounce back. We'll be ready on Friday, and that's, that's the big thing. And everybody can – have off a little bit off nights, off this, off that. But uh, I don't have any doubt they'll be back full strength on Friday. And, again, if we're good enough, we can beat them. But if we're not good enough, then they're going to beat us. So it's a competition, and we got our home court, and let's go take care of business there. And then the, the series starts. It starts, you know, when you come back up here, it'll start. And whoever wins that one obviously will be the, be the winner. But, you know, it's not a do or – I mean, it is a do or die, but – I feel good about it. I feel that we played well enough to win a couple games up here. We just didn't get it done. So keep the feeling, take care of business at home, and come back up and try to get it. Thank you. Okay, oh, thanks. You heard there from Mike D'Antoni. They will have home court. We will get plenty more into KD and information, I'm sure, coming from Coach Kerr in a couple minutes. We'll see whether or not, and he had the same calf straight in 2017, missed two games. We'll see what happens. Obviously, it's the playoffs. Uh, a couple of things to note from looking at the statistics here. Nobody in the starting lineup for the Rockets was worse than a minus one. Austin Rivers, a minus 20 in uh, 24 minutes. The bench did not play well. The other thing we got to talk about is James Harden, who, look, the usage that he had during that month of the season, guys, where everyone was injured, the numbers were incredible. But we wondered, would he tire? After KD goes down, don't you want more aggression? He took four shots. He made three of them. But we're talking about the entire fourth plus two minutes. To do the math, 14 minutes of play, and he took four shots in which he only missed one. Don't you want more aggressiveness out of an MVP when you see, like you talk about in pregame, a weakness of your opponent? Don't you want to see James go to the basket more? You, do more? You, you do, and, and you do question whether or not he was tired. I, I thought when, when Durant went down, I thought, okay, this is right. Like Harden's going to take over. Yes. He smells the blood in the water. Mm -hmm. He's going to go for it, and, and surprisingly, he did it. And it wasn't like Golden State was really doing anything on you. They weren't trapping him. They were switching the screen and roll. He just looked to, to not be aggressive, wasn't attacking. And in that stretch there, the last sort of six minutes, five minutes, he wasn't getting the ball. I mean, it's the guy who's had the, the ball in his hands the whole game, and there were a lot of possessions. Chris Paul, who was trying to make the plays whole time. off the dribble and, and was struggling getting by and turning the corner. So uh, a little bit alarming if you're Houston. Uh, I'm not sure if he was overwhelmed by the moment. I doubt that. 
I think it was probably a little bit of fatigue, but you just can't be fatigued right now. You almost can live with him taking bad shots, taking tired shots, but you want the ball in your best player's hands, and Houston failed to do that. Two years ago, we had all those conversations in the offseason. Are there going to be enough basketballs for the two of them? And look, they've had a tremendous amount of success, but it looked like it was a problem there at that point where you want James to have the ball. Chris took double the shots he did during that time, 3 of 14 overall. And for James, 10 of 16, efficient, 8 of 10 at the line, 31 points. But I'm looking at those numbers thinking, geez, it would have been nice to see him take more shots in the Ford Zeke. Yeah, and, and it, it, it would have been nice, but you, you do have to give Golden State some credit. Uh, I thought they defended him well. And I, I also thought that, you know, Chris probably could have made a couple of more plays didn't make them, which I, which I thought really hurt the Rockets down at the end because even if Harden was tired, you know, Paul didn't really, like, give him that extra um that he probably needed out on the floor at that time. You know, Gordon is not a guy that puts it on the floor. He's a guy that, you know, waits for the shot. Uh, so I, I just thought that Golden State did a, a much better job down at the end defending him. And when Durant went out, I thought Houston really missed their opportunity to take advantage. There was a two-minute stretch there where they clawed back into the game and then even went up one. But they couldn't quite really close the door. They left the door open, and I think Steph got hot, Clay made a couple of shots, and then it was over. The irony is you kind of wish for more of the isolation basketball at that point with Harden. Here's Coach Kerr. Travel to be determined for game six. Hey, Steve, uh, Mark Medina Bay Area, Jesus Group. In light of what Raymond just said about Kevin's. Sorry? In light of what Raymond just said about Kevin Durant's news, what's just the general mood around the team with all that? The mood of the team? Surrounding the, Kevin's injury. Around Kevin. Well, we're all obviously um, you know, disappointed for him. Um, and um, excited about the win, but um, you know, concerned for Kevin and disappointed for him. You know, he's had been on this incredible playoff run, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our guys for pulling the game out, and we'll, you know, we'll see how Kevin's doing tomorrow. Coach, uh, Logan Murdoch, NBC Sports Bay Area. With Kevin out, uh, we don't know for right now, but if he is out for an extended period of time, how much onus are you looking at Steph going forward as, um, in his play? Um, yeah, I mean, if... If Kevin is out, then what you saw in the fourth quarter is, is um, you know, what you're going to have to see going forward. You know, um, we're going to have to find a way. Um, but, um, you know, got it done today. I don't know if you're a soccer fan, but uh, Liverpool yesterday came out with just one of the great wins in soccer history. And after the match, uh, their manager, Jurgen Klopp, said, uh, he said, I'm, you know, the, the young kids in Liverpool are probably asleep by now, so so I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, but our our boys are fucking giants. That's what he said. And uh, I know how he feels, so I apologize to my mom, who uh, is probably watching, but our guys are fucking giants. Like, that was an unbelievable victory tonight. What's that? Yes, yes, after dark. I'm a different guy right now. Sorry, Mom. Front row, right-hand side. Steve, Nick Friedel, ESPN. Were you able to, to talk to Kevin? Uh, yeah. How, how is he doing? He's disappointed, but he's excited for, for our guys and for our victory. But, um, you know, we'll see. Like I said, um, we'll see what happens the next couple of days. Tim Gallick on The Athletic. Steve, when in the moment uh, you see Kevin go out, do you have to fire your guys back up? Was there a moment of... Oh my God! Was there a speech given? It's, what, what, how do you recalibrate that emotion, or how do you focus uh, that emotion? Well, it was such a weird game because you know we played so well uh, in that second quarter, and um, probably should have gone in at, in at half up twenty or more. Uh, we missed a bunch of shots at the end of the uh, second quarter, open threes, and then I made a mistake not getting Draymond out of the game uh, on that last play. He picks up his third foul. And, you know, all of a sudden they start the third quarter strong and it's, you know, it's a game again. And it, it felt like it was slipping away. So, um, 
I, I think our guys just, uh, you know, they've, they've been here so many times. They've been through these battles for the last five years. And, uh, you know, they, uh, they got a lot of they got a lot of guts, and they just they just pulled together and and got it done. There's no speech necessary. They knew what they had to do. Steve, Jason Dumas, Crom for Sports. Uh, kind of piggybacking off that last question, how do you think your guys responded after Kev went out with the injury? And then, do you have to adapt how you play per se when he leaves the game, and you know he's not coming back? Well, they responded beautifully, um, and yeah, we have to play differently because he's such a huge part of, of what we do. And I think you saw Steph go into a different mode uh, when Kevin went out. He knew he had to uh, to be the offensive uh, fulcrum. He, he knew things were going to run through him, and uh, he took over that fourth quarter. It wasn't a great night for him until that point, but he was brilliant in the fourth when we absolutely needed it. Steve, Janie McCauley from AP. When um, Draymond got the technical and then uh, goes down and hits the three immediately, how, how big of a, a sequence was that? And then Clay hit one the next time down. Right. That could have been a momentum shift the other way, I guess. Possibly. Yeah, that was a huge, uh, huge time of the game. You know, Draymond uh, gets the tee and then then hits the three and you know brings the the house down and uh, pretty much summarized uh, Draymond in a nutshell right there. Uh, that's who he is. He's an unbelievable competitor. Um, he makes big shots uh, when we need him to and makes big plays and gets the crowd into it. I thought Clay's three that followed was uh, was fantastic, and I believe that came off of another offensive rebound from Kavon. Kavon was the unsung hero tonight. He was tremendous out there. and. Uh, he uh, made some huge plays for us, including that save in the corner near the end of the game when uh, when Clay ended up uh, getting the lay in to, to seal the game. Fourth row, right hand side. Steve Ron Krejcik from the San Francisco Chronicle. You kind of alluded to it with, on Steph, but he had, it seemed like strangely out of sorts in the first half, not just missing shots, but not you know missing passes where he wasn't paying attention. What sort of Clicked. It, was it Kevin's injury? Do you think that kind of got him back to being Steph, or what? What changed? Yeah, I, I think so. I think when Kevin went out, I think Steph just uh, went into a different uh, mindset, and uh, uh, you know, kind of reminded me of four or five years ago before we had Kevin. You know, we were heavily dependent on Steph uh, generating a lot of our offense uh, back then, and uh, he doesn't have as big of a burden on his shoulders now, but uh, he's fully capable of taking on that burden when necessary, and tonight was it was necessary in the fourth quarter. Far back, left-hand side. Marcus Thompson with The Athletic. Steve, you've shortened the rotation quite a bit for this series. Will fatigue and injuries force you to go deeper than you have the first five games? Uh, yeah, I mean, with Kevin out, it, it changes everything. So we'll have to uh, reconfigure the uh, the rotation, and we'll we'll have time to do that on the plane tomorrow uh, with the staff, and we'll we'll figure it out and try to go from there. Tony Harvey, Sacramento Observer. Coach Kerr, uh, obviously the dynamics changed with uh, Kevin going out the game, but can you talk about like the first quarter uh, when you guys had um, 14 rebounds, 11 assists, uh, Clay Thompson had 12 points. You came out with force. Was that the force that you was looking for to start the game? Yeah, we came out uh, like we needed to come out, uh, protecting our home court and uh, taking control of the game early. We had a great first quarter. Uh, and... Um, that's kind of what you have to do in a series like this. Uh, the home team has won every game. You got to protect your home court, and uh, and we did that tonight. And it started right from the from the opening tip. Anthony Sider with the Athletic. I just I know it's been reported as a calf. There was concern uh, about it possibly being an Achilles at, at some point. That has 100 percent been ruled out. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's not the Achilles and. Uh, you know, when I walked into the coach's office after the game, the uh, the replay of the of the play was was going on, and I thought the same thing because he kind of looked back like he had, you know, he had been kicked or something. Um, and it, I thought, uh, you know, I've seen that before with guys who, who have uh, hurt their Achilles, and so that was my first question, and I was assured that it was uh, it's the calf, it's a calf strain, and not not the Achilles. Third row, right hand side. Uh, Joe Morgan, Sporting News. You, you talked about Draymond a little bit, Coach. Um, when you have an injury like that to, to KD, one of your best players, how important is it to have a guy like Draymond just from an emotional standpoint? 
Well, Draymond is, is critical to us, uh, whether Kevin is here or not. Um, he's, uh, he's always been our emotional engine. Um, he's the guy who, uh, who just gets things going. He stirs the pot. And um, he's, uh, he's just right in the thick of everything constantly. And um, he's, uh, he, we needed every, every bit of his effort tonight. Second row, left-hand side. Hey, Steve, uh, your point you made after asking about needing the patience and the poise, how did you see Clay use that in his game tonight? Um, well, Clay had a phenomenal game. Um, I, I thought, um, you know, he was aggressive from the start, and that's, that's what Clay knows, you know, when he has any struggles at all, um, he's, he's not going to hold back. And so I thought uh, his start was really uh, aggressive and a concerted effort to get himself going, and he had that brilliant first quarter, and that set a tone for us. Fourth row, left-hand side. Joe Fonzi, KTVU, Steve. It also felt like uh, you guys cranked up the defense a little bit in the fourth quarter there. Different personality with, with KD out uh, defensively in the fourth quarter. Well, we, we, uh, you know, we put Looney out there. Um, he's one of our best players, so he, you know, when, when, you're, when you have injuries, you try to put your best – best players on the floor and, and figure it out from there. And, uh, you know, Andre had to play 33 minutes. Uh, we went back to him. We tried to get by him some minutes early in the quarter, uh, and we did. And then he played, I think, the final eight minutes or so and uh, did a great job uh, defending James and just trying to, you know, keep the, uh, keep the ship moving forward. You mentioned Looney over here. Last you mentioned Looney earlier. Um, when he... Came into the game tonight, obviously you brought a lot of energy, did a lot of good things for you. But now going forward without Kevin, uh, does this mean more minutes for him? And just what does he bring to you guys in general? Uh, he's a uh, really, really smart basketball player. He understands uh, the game um, just innately. He just uh, He's in the right place at the right time. You know, he took two shots all game, but um, had a huge impact with the offensive boards. Uh, his defense, he made a couple big free throws down the stretch. Uh, I think it was coming off an offensive uh, rebound. Or no, it was, a, it was a lob underneath, I guess. Um, but, you know, Loon is not a, you know, 35, 38-minute guy. So uh, that's, you know, don't expect that with Kevin out. Um, but uh, he's going to play a big role. Coach Carter, Tony wow. Hardy, the SAC right. observer. Um, game six coming up. How do you view this? and uh, possibly, you know, closing this game out in Houston? Um, I, you know, I, we'll, we'll take a look at the film um, tomorrow, uh, prepare on the plane to Houston, and um, we'll figure it out then. But right now, I don't, uh, I don't really have many thoughts on game six. I'm, you know, thinking about Kevin and about uh, uh, how gutsy our guys are and, uh, you know, how fortunate I am to coach them. And, you know, hopefully we can... Um, you know, do enough to, to win one more game in this series. And that's the plan. Thanks, everybody. Some players in here, Charlie.